Ask Reddit, should the USA place a fat tax on sugary drinks and junk food to combat obesity? Why or why not? Part one. We have a sugar tax in San Francisco. I work for a soda company and we expected our sugar-free sales to rise, but we found out people actually don't care about paying five cents more for what they want. This could have to do with the demographic of San Francisco and might not hold the same across the country. We have this in the UK. It seems to be working. Nevertheless, the fall in the amount of sugar consumed through soft drinks is bigger than the slight rise in sugar consumption through these foods. Across all these product categories put together, sugar consumption decreased by 3.3% per person in Great Britain between 2015 and 2018. It's also made drinks makers put less sugar in their products to avoid the tax, which is also a win in my eyes. If you remove subsidies from the food industry, I think you'll find that healthy foods end up being far cheaper than unhealthy ones. This, subsides distort the market to unbelievable degree. To pick just one example, the subsidized production of corn makes HFCS super cheap. If these subsidies were removed, sugary drinks would automatically be more expensive and likely so would beef, encouraging people to find substitutes. Instead, we want to subsidize the agribusiness that makes the stuff, then tax the consumer at the point of sale. Can we at least start with removing the subsidies? This is actually already a thing in Philadelphia, minus the junk food. It's extremely unpopular here. I read that sales dropped 50% in the city while it raised sales outside of it over 40%. Making this a national policy would cause a lot of upset. I feel compelled to add, since this keeps coming up, that I do support the idea behind taxing unhealthy foods. Obviously something needs to be done about the obesity rates and health issues going on in this country. However, I feel like there are better ways to do it. Instead of increasing the cost of unhealthy foods, which, as other comments have said, we can have negative effects on the poor, although this seems to be under debate. Why not try to decrease the cost and increase the variety of healthier food options? Why not increase education and awareness around healthy eating? Or why not pass regulations requiring junk food to have less of the ingredients that make it junk? I feel like there are so many other alternatives that aren't guaranteed to piss people off. We all know how Americans reacted to a tea tax. If the tea drinking community got that fired up, imagine what the Mountain Dew drinking community would do. Gamers rise up. Oh, gamer revolt. I got this, guys. Hey, double XP on all games until the revolt's over. If they did, the people would try to recall Leslie Nope. Scrolled way too far to find this. I'd say nah, because there's a huge gray area. Oh, so definitely we're taxing butter. White bread definitely. Yeah, the nice artesian French bread is included under that umbrella. All condiments will tax. Ketchup is sugar, and mayo is oil. Pickles too, yeah. They're just pure sodium, etc. Just look at Seattle, where milk-based beverages are exempt from the sugary drink tax, so people can still get their untaxed Starbucks drinks with more sugar per ounce than a can of Coke. There are many pros and cons to this, but at the end of the day, I have to say I'm against it for a few primary reasons. One, it disproportionately affects poor people, who already struggle. Although this is indirect, and mostly due to the impoverished working more than those with more money, yes, ironic, and so having less time to cook healthy meals for themselves. Two, it doesn't fight the primary causes of obesity, which are mostly unbalanced diets with too little exercise most easily combated by giving children more supervised exercise and less supervised desk time, and properly funding schools and extracurricular activities. Too much unhealthy food can exacerbate these issues. But then again, do we all agree what constitutes unhealthy? I gave myself 15 kidney stones by overeating raw spinach faster than my body could process the calcium stones precursors. Is spinach healthy? Of course, in moderation, as are fatty foods like steak, bacon, and dairy. We also need carbohydrates from candy, bread, and fruit. So this raises the question, what do we tax? Three, poor diet education in schools. Everything I learned about real nutrition, I learned as an adult. 
Almost everything before college was not only useless, but many times wrong and often actually worse than saying nothing. Examples. Tongues aren't separated by taste and the food pyramid was already outdated when I was in school. And from what I've learned during my master's classes, what we know about our biology is surface information for the most part. A lot of facts about nutrition are our best guess at the time. And what works for me might not work for someone else. Separate but relevant, label laws in the USA are worse than useless and a much more noticeable cause of obesity. Incidentally, also easier to fix but harder to lobby for because name brands make a lot of money off these poor laws. Case in point, Tic Tac brand mints are legally labeled sugar-free as containing zero sugar, despite being made almost 100% from sugar. This is due to the fact a serving is a single Tic Tac, which weighs barely under 0.5 grams. Legally in the United States, anything with less than half a gram of sugar can be labeled sugar-free, rounded down to zero on the nutrition sheet. Legally, I could label a 0.25 gram sugar packet to sugar-free nutritionally, zero sugar sugar. The point of a tax on an unhealthy product is to offset the healthcare costs related to its use. Deterring use because of cost is a bonus. As the US government does not believe in universal healthcare, it should definitely not be taxing it at a higher rate. That's my opinion anyway. In European studies, it actually costs a lot less in healthcare for people to live unhealthy lives because it more often leads to heart attack and stroke, the cheapest deaths right around retirement age. The majority of healthcare costs come from people who live a long time and are on like 30 meds a day and double knee and hip replacements and multiple hospital stays and elderly care services. This is of course putting no value on living behind retirement age, but purely economically it really doesn't have any. Instead of making soda and junk more expensive, how about we make healthy foods less expensive? Rice, beans, potatoes, lentils, chickpeas, onions, bananas, spinach, peppers, eggs, squash, tofu. All that is some of the cheapest food there is. I think it's more that processed healthy food is more expensive than processed unhealthy food. If you're willing to do basic cooking, it's possible to eat very well and very cheaply. Yep, I never understood why people think junk food is cheap. It's not cheap, it's just fast to make. I could make myself food for one and a half to two days for a single price of a kebab or a Big Mac kit. No, I don't believe it's the government's job to control the choices people make. Even if it was, the U.S. provides abundant subsidies to the corn industry, so sugary food is already technically subsidized. Also, I don't trust regulators to do it right. For some reason, we already have a meaningless label on our food for added sugar that makes juices appear healthy. No, it just seems like a patronizing money grab that will disproportionately hurt low-income individuals that live in food deserts, neighborhoods, with few or no grocery stores and limited availability of fresh and non-processed food. Soda is a luxury good. There's literally no reason for anyone to buy soda, even in a food desert. If you're in Flint, Michigan, even bottled water will be cheaper than soda. Do you feel other things which are taxed, like tobacco and alcohol shouldn't be because they're more commonly used in lower income areas too? We don't have health care, so how is that going to combat obesity? People will still pay for things that's bad for you. Look at cigarettes and alcohol. I'd be pissed if my mother, a diabetic because her pancreas crapped out, she's not obese, had to pay another tax on the soda she drinks when she has a low blood sugar. No, sin taxes are stupid and shouldn't be legal. Sin taxes are basically a tax on poor people and it doesn't help them at all. It hurts them more than it hurts anyone else. Also, we have a sugar tax in the UK, and it basically ruined a lot of products. Rest in peace, Iron Brew. Since companies change the recipes to comply with the rules, reducing sugar amounts, adding substitutes, etc., why should everyone be punished because a few people don't have any self-control? No, that's called petty tyranny. There's this underlying idea that I've encountered a lot recently, in which any social problem needs to be solved via top-down legislation usually at the federal level. 
Obesity and diet are a major issue, but I think there are probably better ways to bring about the change without jumping into the murky waters of ban it legislation. Incentives, social change, supporting healthier food options, etc., etc. Nope, I lift weights, spin, and run. I keep myself at an acceptable weight and health level. I don't want to pay extra for an occasional snack because other people can't control themselves. Then what would you think about a higher premium on an individual's health care plan? Their weight makes them more prone to sickness, similar to how smokers pay a higher rate. I understand that a small amount of individuals have hormone imbalances that cause weight gain, but the vast majority of overweight individuals, I believe, are due to unhealthy lifestyle. No, I don't believe it's the government's place to stop citizens from doing stupid things that harm themselves. So, no seatbelts? Seatbelt laws are some of the dumbest laws in America. I can go out on a learner's permit and hop on a motorbike that I got for 1500 bucks on Craigslist and do 0 to 60 in 2.4 seconds with no gear and no helmet and be perfectly legal. But if I hop in my truck that weighs over 30,000 pounds and not put on a seatbelt, that's a huge ticket? No, it's one of those feel-good legislations which causes more harm than good. That's not true at all. They have a sugary drinks tax in Philadelphia that raises between 70 and 80 million dollars a year for free pre-K and parks and recreation budgets. It brought about a drastic, about 50% reduction in sugary drinks in Philly, and though they have gone up in the surrounding counties, it is a net decrease in sugary drink consumption, reducing strain on our health system, as well as on working class parents. No. It's their choice to consume unhealthy goods. My body, my choice. It'd be nice if they didn't inflict their choices on me through higher taxes for Medicare and higher insurance premiums as healthcare companies struggle to pay for their chronic illnesses. As our beloved Ron Swanson once said, the whole point of this country is if you want to eat garbage, balloon up to 600 pounds and die of a heart attack at 43, you can. You are free to do so. Whether or not that's the right thing to do, I suppose is up to the individual. You might say it would be a less selfish thing to put a less stress on our healthcare system by being healthy, but leaving responsibility in the hands of the people is a double-edged sword. It works sometimes, and it often doesn't. <laughs>